ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas and welcome to the Southern Wing of the Stink Bug Works. Um, I'm about to go charge batteries and such and go through that entire process to uh, run some boats tomorrow, weather depending. And this morning while I was consuming the jet juice, I was uh, playing on the computer and I stumbled across a laser cutter. Now, laser cutters come in all sizes and all costs. One of the things that controls the cost is the size of the material a laser could cut. And all the designs I've done, the uh, 120th scale hydro and here, the uh, tunnel jet, although I've reoriented the sheets um, to make it easier to split them in half and put them in a box to ship them. But uh, everything is based on this two foot by one foot piece of plywood. So I looked around and looked around and sure enough, I found a laser that would do that. And it was a desktop laser and had a number of features. And I looked at it and thought, you know, if I could ammer, see, see the whole point of the game is not to lose money. We'll talk about money in a bit, but the whole point is not to lose money. So if I were to buy a laser, I would have to make X number of kits and sell them for X number of dollars to pay for this laser. Now this laser, to be honest with you boys and girls, this laser is 1500 bucks and then you're gonna need one of these and one of those and then a roll of that and some of this and some of So it's two grand, figure two grand for the laser. So I'd have to sell a lot of kits. So I know some people have expressed interest in this and uh, I, I like the way the experimenting is going. I like Big B just, just going off and saying, well, uh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. You know, he changed the motor out to the, the outrunner that's in that, that little boat that goes with it. And it's like, hey, that's a great idea. And so I like to see that kind of stuff going on. So this, this, I mean, here's an example of a cool laser cut kit. But I'd have to have a huge interest in this. I can easily now, were I to buy a laser, were I to buy a laser, I wouldn't have to keep anything in inventory. I could cut it as needed, which is a huge benefit to me. I can buy wood and just have a handful of pieces around if I get a couple of orders. Okay, boom, there goes a couple of pieces and we're good to go. So I'm really seriously thinking about that. I know a couple of people have expressed interest in the 120 Hydro and I'm, I'm done with those. But if I were just buying raw sheets of wood and I can get these in bulk from Balsa USA at a fair price, not a cheap price, <laughs> at a fair price. And in which case I could buy a laser and make kits. Would it be worth my while? Would it be worth the trouble? I have all the information here. Anyway, one other thing I thought I'd show you my dad, uh, um, uh, just so you get an idea of, of his, his age, he was a World War II vet. So my dad used to take um, slide photos, and these boxes are boxes that were for slide photos, but they also work really well. <gasps> for batteries. You know, you want to keep your batteries in a fireproof box. This is a cool fireproof box. And people throw these things away now because nobody uses slides, but you know, 
it fits uh, lipos. So there you go. Um, a cheap lipo box. <laughs> An old slide box. So there you go, boys and girls. Some thoughts. Should I buy a laser and make more laser cut kits? You know, I've got three that are legit right now. Maybe four if you consider that little 12-inch uh, 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 um, outrigger. Because I made that with a laser cut um, parts. So uh, I'll have to go back and look at that and see if I could resurrect the uh, laser cut 12-inch rigger. That little thing ran really good. The problem was I had couldn't get a good rudder, and my rudder had too much slop in it. At that small scale, a little bit of slop meant a lot of slop. So uh, I never really got it to run really straight. Got to find a good solid rudder. I'm thinking of revisiting it and doing what we used to do to the F5B gliders. Let's see if I have the, ah, ah, ah. Here's what we used to do to the F5B gliders, where your Z-bend coming from your control linkage went into the arm of the servo. We'd put a drop of CA glue on there, let it kick off, and then move the servo and let it break the glue joint, but it left a super smooth and super tight fit on this Z-bend. I might go back and look at that and see if I could use that to tighten up the slop. That might be a good alternative. So uh, someday I'll revisit that. You know, we're going to start getting our really crappy weather. We don't get crappy weather till February and March, and that's when it starts to rain all day long, and it's like, eh, you don't want to go outside. So um, that's all the thinking for now, boys and girls. Until next time, jet out.